one of the things that I've experienced uh, working in treatment for a long time is uh, consumer wariness, uh, meaning people are more hesitant than they used to be to send their loved one to treatment, and people who are looking for treatment are more hesitant to come. It's always been the case. It's a, it's a difficult choice to make and a hard threshold to, to cross, um, but more so now, and I think one of the reasons is um, the discourse about addiction, treatment, and recovery um, has hit the mainstream. And one of the things that's come out is that, you know, the, uh, the success of treatment um, is like less than 15%. And there's the, that statement, and then there's the realities behind the statement. And the question is, why are treatment success rates so low? And there are several reasons. One of them is there's poor treatment out there. Um, treatment that's not set up well. Uh, treatment where people don't know what they're doing. Uh, treatment that doesn't understand the various personalities of the population they're working with, the underlying conditions and the problems. And they just don't do a good job, like a, like a bad auto mechanic. Um, there's also shady treatment. And so since around 2009, there's been a lot of treatment programs that are started that just aren't trustworthy, meaning their intention wasn't to figure out how to help people recover. Their intention was to make money you know, largely through insurance. And with that kind of intention, you can imagine some of the results are disastrous. And that's a real reality. Uh, there's uh, probably the biggest reason why the success rates in treatment are low uh, don't have to do with uh, those two areas I've covered. It has to do with the nature of addiction and the nature of recovery. The nature of addiction is it is chronic. It is not um, a problem that can be solved with an event. It's something that has to be worked with over time. So a good analogy to understand why treatment success rates are low as reported is to think about something like the gym. And if you say, how effective are gyms? And if the way that you design your test is you say, um, let's follow 100 people who buy gym memberships and see how many people are in shape a year later. My guess is you're gonna see like 10, 15% success on those goals of fitness of people who signed up for memberships, right? In fact, the, the gym membership model is, that has it built in. You know, everybody can't go to the gym, right? So uh, recovery is the same way. Recovery is similar to a muscle you have to exercise consistently and lots of people will sign up for something that they won't follow through with. And it's the really hard part of treatment and recovery. It's this mysterious question of the will. You know, why do some people at some points have the will to change certain parts of their lives and other people don't? And honestly, it's, it's not a place where we have good answers. Um, now in many areas of life, that's not the biggest deal in the world. It's like, well, they're just not ready to change. So, you know, let's wait till they're ready to change. You know, if you have a loved one or a spouse or, you know, a kid who is, you know, shooting heroin or something like that, you really don't feel like you have the luxury to wait around for them to change. You want to intervene, they could die while you're waiting around to change. And so people intervene and people are in different stages of readiness for change. And there's not an easy solution for that. There's um, trying to meet people when they're at, getting the best treatment you can for the longest period you can get it within whatever the constraints are and giving people a shot at changing. That's the reality of treatment. That's the reality of the success rates.